if you look at a startup, SD2 might be doing the CTO position. I, I won't call it exactly the Turing Award, but it's a pretty, pretty difficult position to be in. Hi everyone, if you're watching this video, then you know what you have come here for. <laughs> you have come here for looking at the career progression of a software engineer. And in this video, by the end of it, you'll have a good idea of who a software engineer is at the start, 10 years after their career, and probably at the end of their career. So how does their career progress? And I'll give you a timeline, a rough timeline of what role should you be at and what are the responsibilities that you are expected to cover. It's going to be exciting, stay tuned. Let's start. The first position is SDE1 with zero years of experience at entry level. What does an SD1 do or what are they expected to do? An SD1 is expected to code well, which means that if given an assignment, given that you have to write, let's say two or three APIs because of a business requirement, you will be able to write those APIs. The code inside it will be good. If there is any design pattern required, then you should be able to implement it. Connections to be made with a database or if you need to connect with an external system, again, those are API calls, you should be able to make them comfortably. That's it. What you're expected to do is you're expected to code a particular task well. You might also think of one level before this as an intern. What can you expect SDE intern? Be inquisitive around the technologies that they're working. And by the end of their internship, they're expected to be able to code well at SD1 level so that they get the pre-placement offer. You're basically promoted from intern to SD1. And as you'll see, promotions depend on you performing at a level above you. You already perform as a SD2 before you get the SD2 promotion from SD1. So as an intern, you know, you're interested in technologies, you code well, you code at the level of SD1 that is required here. And we are happy with you. Let's go for the next position, which is SD2. It takes about two to six years of experience to get here. The idea being that in two years, if you're in the same organization, it's likely that you're going to get promoted to SD2. If you are coming from a different organization, by the time you get to know the ins and outs of the organization, there it takes some time. Plus there's always a low ball for various reasons. It's not just because you know they're trying to take advantage of you. But this SD1 has not seen any other place. If you have come as a graduate in the organization, you are having probably more loyalty than a person who's just joining. So that's why there's an expectation that you know, you'll get promoted quickly. Also, they truly understand the company vision, mission. They are a little better integrated usually. That's the reason why they get promotions a little faster. But having said that, yeah, two to six years, you should be at this position. What is the expectation? What are your roles and responsibilities? You are expected to understand your system. Specifically, I'm talking about a microservice or some sort of business unit that you are working for, the tech that you're providing for that unit. You really need to understand the entire system. If you have to make any kind of design decisions or trade-offs, you understand them quite well. Business requirements, I'll put it in brackets because that is what really drives the design decisions. It's not just the current business requirements, but the previous business requirements. You understand all the features that your system provides. You understand the interactions it has with other systems. This person could only make it interact with another system. This person can understand what is happening inside their system, inside their service, inside their business unit, like a small business unit, right? A team. You are a person who is a dependable team player. I am not mentioning any compensation levels because they vary wildly from organization to organization. Now for the even bigger leap, L5 is SE3 or senior software engineer or senior SE who not just does everything that a SD2 can do, but they interact with other teams. Their designs don't just look into the trade-offs of the current system, but actually think about the overall larger system, everyone they are interacting with and make optimal decisions for them. The third one is they set standards for design and code quality for their team. And the fourth one is they should be able to mentor new joinees or young engineers. Because there's different organizations believe different things. Some people believe that, you know, by doing, you're leading the team in the best way. So your code quality being extremely high is going to be a good indicator for 
everybody else to understand hey if i want to be a senior software engineer someday i have to at least code as well as this person se3 as you can see is no longer constrained to the team that they are working with they usually go out and interact with other teams they are the speaker for their team when it comes to tech a team can have more than one se but usually you'll see that there is one se in a team as the organizations get larger and larger you will of course see a higher concentration of senior software engineers uh, in some teams but in general the software engineer who's at this position can speak for their team they don't need a clearance from oh i'll just go and talk to this person and then they'll get the clearance and then they'll come and talk to you usually what they say is going to be done that's that's how i'll roughly put it they are the tech speakers for their team and and the way that they can speak for the team is because they actually consider the design of multiple teams beforehand their code quality is really high which means that the testing level is also pretty high significant portion of your time is spent on code reviews now comes sd4 this is called tech lead in some places se4 is a position where you're doing everything that sd3 does apart from that you set standards for engineering across a business unit what do i mean by this there's an se4 maybe for every 20 other engineers if there is a bug or there is a incident who's going to write the root cause analysis not you you will be setting the standard for that you will be saying oh i need a root cause analysis report how do we make sure that if a stand up happens then it is efficient you are probably looking into the promotion cycles of different people an sc3 usually has maintenance of standards an sc4 comes up with standards based on the common problems that they are seeing in an organization there is a different angle also that you can take from sc3 you don't need to be a tech person you can go for management which is engineering manager 1 we are not going in that direction because it's a separate completely different role you can become engineering manager 1 2 senior engineering manager a director and a cto but that's a different angle we are just looking at the tech angle for now you can also bring in engineering product within the organization what do i mean by this there's too many logs out there the way it is being logged the format is not right so you write a logging engine you are no longer using open source libraries or libraries that you have purchased you build the logging engine in house and everybody else uses it like a library what's happening here is that there's a engineering product that you are basically selling to other teams and then you give it to l5 or engineering managers and then tell them that listen i know you are working on this problem if you use this engine it's going to save you x amount a lot of their work has to do with horizontal teams different teams come to them ask them for advice and they can give them solutions okay it's also true for debugging purposes if you have something super complex that you need to debug a uh, staff engineer can help you out there they'll guide you in the right direction is the expectation let's go to senior staff engineer senior staff engineer does everything that a staff engineer does they might be guiding other staff engineers on what the overall organization needs not just one big business unit like the finance team has one staff engineer but the entire organization may have multiple units operations logistics procurement so the senior staff engineer can help you they'll be speaking to different business units and trying to gather information on what is the problem here so they might write a network protocol for you we notice that a large part of the http header makes no sense i can write a custom network protocol and get that done find technical solutions to large or company wide business problems for some companies l7 is where they have the director of engineering they may end up doing a lot more than this depends on the organization right not every organization is very large that you can nicely split into different pieces some of them have things bunched up together if you look at a startup sd2 might be doing the cto position okay but obviously that doesn't mean that the skill level is this high it just means that they don't have any l7 engineer or l8 engineer and so the uh, sd2 person is working really really hard and gathering a lot of skills they can probably function at the level of sd3 for their experience level the only problem being that you will call them cto but they are not you know at l8 or l9 what about experience level we missed that for sd3 
एस डी थ्रीज और सीनियर इंजीनियर्स आर रफली एक्सपीरियंस बिटवीन फोर टू एट ईयर्स इफ यू हैव फोर ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन द सेम कंपनी यू आर लाइकली टू बी प्रोमोटेड अप टू एस डी थ्री ओके बिकॉज लाइक आई सेड दस मल्टीपल कंसल्टेशन लॉयल्टी एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली द वैल्यू दैट यू प्रोवाइड इट टेंस टू हैपन दैट इफ यूर इन द सेम कंपनी यू प्रोवाइड अ लॉट मोर वैल्यू बिकॉज यू एंड अप not only becoming really comfortable with the technologies of the company you become comfortable with the vision and mission of the company you become the spokesperson in terms of the tech people around you are all connections you join the graduate batch of the company with let's say 100 other engineers that's 100 other connections anything happens you just connect with the other guy and you have a good rapport so you you can build systems quickly for sd4 it varies much more as you see people who get senior and senior the experience level varies significantly and by significantly i mean 10 to 20 years if you're working in the same organization or if it's a new organization and you joined it early in 10 years being a staff software engineer is really really good but if you have come from a different organization giving you a very high role is always a little risky definitely staff engineer is something which is amazing and any your career as a staff engineer does not seem bad at all in my opinion Okay let's go for L8 this is very senior called principal engineer L8 folks don't have the standard interview rounds that software engineers have it's not like a DSA question will be asked to you it doesn't make sense often what happens with L8 engineers principal level engineers is there are interviews but there's a lot of background checking what have you done to deserve this position the standards that you set are company wide and sometimes it's not just company wide you can make it open source or you can make it a paid solution a product like apache kafka when developed by a principal engineer can be sold or open sourced so that thousands of other engineers can use that and millions of other people can be affected by it positively most companies don't even have this they you are you are at a cto level at this point In fact some companies have one principal engineer and one CTO so the CTO handles the management side of things everything which relates to how do the engineers perform best optimizations while the principal engineer sets the technical standards of the entire organization but you also have one more position L9 there's really no word for this but if you if you want one I'll borrow one from Google distinguished engineer you are building technologies which help the world okay they are not just technologies for your company of course that is a part of it worldwide solutions to technical problems i'll take an example webrtc webrtc is something which we use when you're going on google meet that's a pretty amazing solution <laughs> has helped us get through the covid problem we were able to video conference that is the level of technology that we are talking about it's it's not just company wide you can look at dynamo db the solution here when you open source it or you make it available for a price becomes huge what's the difference between a principal engineer and a distinguished engineer the distinguished engineer usually has a solution which is adopted much more by the industry or the world what's the experience level required for a distinguished engineer i can't say okay for staff engineer we said 10 to 20 years for senior staff usually it is 15 to 25 years principal engineer i can't tell you like i said it's like how long will it take you to be a cto no one knows and so distinguished engineer is even more hazy in terms of their career progression but this is a position that you can aim for let's say at very large tech companies so finally we come to the last position that i am aware of l10 and i think this is almost all the organizations including google uh, microsoft have this as the peak person i should just call them a star i guess in terms of engineering i would say it's like the turing award okay it's just, i i won't call it exactly the turing award but it's a pretty pretty difficult position to be in i'll take an example take large data sets run them parallelly through a bunch of cheap systems and get multiple intermediate results mix them together if you want and finally you'll have a data set before this what used to happen is you would have a bunch of processors trying to do this and every time they would fail it would be like damn you know we have to run it again so this architecture is super useful uh, there's a paper written on this look at it in the description 
uh, very, very interesting MapReduce. Another architecture is PageRank, very creative, finding a problem, which is how do you trust different websites and writing an algorithm so that the factor of trust can be bought into the algorithm. If more people point to it, it's probably a good website. So your SEO is based on page rank and your page rank is based on how many people are pointing to the page. To some extent, you can say DynamoDB is also maybe a L10 level, like multiple databases have sprung out of that architecture, the internal architecture of sharding in different places and store your data efficiently. So who would you rank as stars? Maybe Linus, yeah, the guy who made Linux and Git. Sanjay is probably deserves to be the star engineer. But uh, a person who comes up with multiple revolutionary technologies is in this category. How much do they get paid is not very important. How long does it take for you to get there? Well, you know, not everyone becomes L10, but you never know. Like you're watching this video right now, you might end up as the principal engineer soon, uh, you know, in a few years, and you might even be a star, in which case, please do feel free to connect. I would love to make a YouTube video on it. Thank you so much for watching this. If you have any doubts, suggestions, or corrections, do let us know in the comments. I would love to have your suggestions and your thoughts on this. Until next time then, see you. Bye-bye.